Okay, so welcome back. Uh, what we've been talking about so far is kind of understanding what we're doing when we're making a measurement. And we went over this so-called true value hypothesis, as we called it, namely that there's something uh, that we're measuring and we assume that there's an underlying physical reality associated with that. It might be like Planck's constant, or maybe it's just the uh, spring constant of a particular spring we found in our shell. But the idea is that whatever we're measuring is well-defined. Now, even though it has a well-defined value, it may uh, give different results every time we measure it. This could be for different reasons. We might uh, get an incorrect value because we've randomly, there's some intrinsic or extrinsic uncertainty, and we've randomly got a deviation from that. And we expect some deviation. This is what we call the uncertainty. In the last two videos, we're understanding these uncertainties. There can also be systematic effects. We're going to concentrate you mostly on random effects. As experimentalists, we're going to design our experiment uh, the best we can to avoid systematic effects. If they're there, we'll either correct for them or fix our equipment so that it doesn't have it. But if we get rid of all the systematic stuff, we still expect some random variation. And random errors can typically be corrected by statistics, namely taking the measurement again and again and again. So we're going to talk about that today. And what we're going to go through is uh, some of the key parameters uh, when we're making a measurement. Let's say we're measuring, well, a spring constant, since we brought it up. And for the first time in the course, that is not a resistor. That is a spring. It'll have some mass hanging on it and some downward force, mg. And in equilibrium, it'll have a restoring force, kx, such that these are equal. And we want to measure uh, k, which has units of newtons per meter, should be equal to mg over x. And what we'll do this by measuring for various m's and various x's the ratio of uh, m times g over x. And we'll try to get a best estimate of what that value is. So the first thing, I mean, first of all, what is the best estimate for k? Let's just pretend we made some measurements. Let's make some uh, measurements up. So we measured uh, 4, 4, 7, 5, 6, 4, 5 uh, for this ratio here, and the units were always newtons per meter. So what is our best estimate of k? Well, the best estimate is uh, something you're probably familiar with, uh, the average or the mean. And for this case, what is our definition of the mean? Well, it's just the sum of all the elements divided by the number of elements. So the mean is, def the mean is defined as the sum of all these elements divided by n. And this is for whatever we're measuring. So we'll put a, a box around that one. OK, so maybe no surprises. Um, our best estimate, given these measurements, uh, is what the what k is most likely to be is given by this mean. And we're going to prove that rigorously next video. Uh, but for now, let's just accept it as a reasonable way, uh, a reasonable um, statement of what our best estimate for k is. So in this case, let's just grind through it. OK, so that's just plugging in the numbers. And uh, we'll have to add it all up here. 10, 20, 28. If I do my math right, I get 35 newton meters, uh, newtons per meter uh, divided by 7. So our best estimate, given all these measurements of the spring, happens to be 5 newtons per meter. Um, that's great. That's pretty straightforward. That's how we define it. Uh, but we can do more. So first of all, we see that there's some uncertainty here. So we can estimate a few things. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to estimate what is the uncertainty in our prediction that k is equal to 5 newtons per meter? And we're going to do that in, in, in two steps. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to measure, we're going to estimate our error per measurement. Okay, So we're actually going to make an estimate of, our, uh, of how off we are. We're going to estimate the shakiness, the deviation uh, from, our, from our mean. Okay, So we're going to look at the, the mean, the average, the mean deviation from our mean. It's a mouthful, uh, and that's what's called, uh, well, the standard deviation. So the question is, what is the average deviation from the mean? And what is our estimate, therefore, of our uncertainty per measurement? OK, so that is what we're doing is we're making another estimate of a quantity. We don't know our uncertainty. Maybe we could have ground it through, or we could have measured a bunch of things, but we don't always know that. But we can estimate it uh, from the data. So let's write down what a reasonable definition is for this. So we might want to look at the average of the deviation of the ith data point, or rather it's not x here, it's k, minus the average. 
But if we give this a little bit of thought, we might run into trouble because we're just as likely, if all things are equal, to be above than below. So if we take enough measurements, the average deviation, even though these things can be wildly fluctuating, uh, would be zero. So we're going to do the same kind of trick that we did with RMS, voltage. We're going to look at the root average square. And that's going to always be, you know, the square is always positive. We're going to take the square root of the average square. That's going to give us a positive quantity, and that's going to give us a better estimate of how far we are, uh, on average, away from the uh, mean. So another word for average, by the way, is mean. And how do we calculate that? We, did, we do what we did before. We take the average, the sum of over all things of the quantity that we want to average. And then we divide it by the number. So here we're averaging the square divided by the total number, and we're going to square root. Okay, This is the standard deviation. Move it down there. And this is an important one as well, so we'll put a box around that as well. The standard deviation of our measurement of k. Uh, this is, again, in words, the average deviation uh, from the mean. So we call this the standard deviation. And uh, let's calculate it for, for our quantity here. Let's just grind through it. So remember, for us, our mean is 5. So let's just write it all out. It might be a bit of a handful, but we'll just, we'll just do it. All right, the sum of all those deviations uh, divided by 7. And well, what is that? Let's plug it in. So this is that, and if we add all those up, we get 8 sevenths, it looks like. So therefore, for us, we still have to take the square root. So for us, the standard deviation here is going to be equal to the square root of 8 sevenths. OK, we have to calculate that. We'll grab a calculator. Actually, this is a good trick. If you guys are ever doing this, we can use um, It's a nice thing to have in your tool belt. If you ever see something like this, you can get a pretty good estimate using the Taylor series. Um, that the 1 plus a small number, uh, uh, x, uh, is approximately 1 plus a half of x. It's the Taylor series expansion. It's a cool little trick to have in your pocket. So in here I have this. I have 1 plus 1 seventh, which is approximately equal to 1 plus 1 fourteenths. 1 fourteenth. Still got to know what 1 fourteenth is. Uh, but it's going to be like 1 point, oh, I don't know, halfway between 1 tenth and 1 twentieth. 1.07-ish. Well, let's actually plug it in now. Hey, 1.069. Not, not bad. So that's going to be uh, 1.07. What are the units? Well, it's a square root of k squared. So it's just the same units of k, newtons per meter. This is our standard deviation here. In this example, our average deviation from the mean is just over 1.01 newtons 1.1 sorry just under 1.1 newtons per meter okay so that's that's not bad um, that's how much we expect each measurement to vary okay I want to stop here and give an, an annoying fact alert super annoying fact there's two definitions of the standard deviation that you'll uh, see floating around so this definition here as we've done it is what you call the population standard deviation and it's given by sigma. So on your calculator, if you have your scientific calculator handy, if you look at it, there will be a sigma. It's this population standard deviation. But it's what is known as a biased estimator. And there's another standard deviation, uh, which is unbiased. We won't get into too many details, but we can roughly understand. So let me explain roughly why this is true. Given this data set, we actually first needed to do a calculation. We took n samples. We actually needed to calculate use those samples, which have their own uncertainty, to calculate the mean. And we needed the mean in order to calculate this. So we really actually have n minus 1 independent data points here. We've already used a degree of freedom, so to speak, uh, to calculate the mean. So we actually have n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we have another uh, standard deviation, which is often s, or it's often called s, and it's 1 over the square root of n minus 1. And this is called the sample standard deviation. And on your calculator, it'll have an s instead of a sigma. Uh, it's sometimes used. okay. And if you're doing the hardcore statistics, you really need to worry about uh, biased estimators and whether or not you should use one or the other. But often in an experiment, you're taking n to be sufficiently large, 
uh, that the difference is negligible. Already at five points, what is the difference? The ratio, let's just think about this, the ratio is square root of n minus 1 over n. And let's say we use n is equal to 10 or something like that, or even small. Let's say we take a very few data points. We use 7 here. Let's just use 7. 6 sevenths. But let's just calculate it. It's going to be about 94% or so. Okay, you got me. It was 93%. 92.5. Okay, 93%. Um, it's almost there. And already, I'm just going to plug in, uh, when we take 10 data points, it's at 95%. We take 100 data points, the difference is 90 is 0.5%. As soon as we take a significant number of points, um, the difference is, becomes negligible. So it doesn't really matter. A lot of people actually prefer to use um, the sample standard deviation for experiments because it naturally overestimates the uncertainty, which is usually a good conservative estimate. Uh, but that's the uh, annoying fact alarm and the uh, just something to be aware of and to be aware of which one you're calculating. So just know which one you're getting, know which button you're hitting, and the difference becomes negligible as soon as n becomes anything remotely large. Okay, uh, let's just continue going. We're gonna use sigma for this course, um, but you can use both. Okay, the last quantity, we haven't really answered the question of the uncertainty in our estimate that the spring constant in this case is five newtons per meter. Let's do that now. So we've actually estimated how off we expect to be each time, and that's called the standard deviation. But there's also the standard deviation of the mean, S dom, all right? So not the standard deviation from the mean, that's just the deviation from the mean, but of the mean that we calculated. What is the uncertainty in our average, in our mean? Now we'll prove this a bit more rigorously next time. But for now, let's just uh, kind of hand wavily um, and reasonably uh, say what, what we've actually done here. Now every measurement we've make in, we've made rather has an uncertainty of it um, given by sigma. But we're actually taking n measurements of something. Imagine we're measuring a rate or something like this, and we're doing it n times. Well, this is just like a counting problem, okay, if you can buy that. So what we're doing is we're actually taking n measurements, we're measuring the same thing n times. And just like last time, we found out that we get an, a, a decrease of root n in uh, our uncertainty, uh, that's precisely what we're getting, uh, what we'll get now, right? So we measure one thing with some uncertainty, we measure it n times, we're going to get a 1 over root n uh, factor of our uncertainty, a 1 over root n reduction in our uncertainty. So the standard deviation of the mean is merely the standard deviation divided by root n, and sometimes we call that a sigma with the, the, the k there. This is where how it's often called, but you got to be careful because sometimes that little bar that's hiding over your value is well hidden. So sometimes it's called SDOM, SDOM, and that's the standard deviation of the mean. And the nice thing is if we're using our, our sigma definition, then the standard deviation of the mean goes like this. Okay, this 1 over n. If we're using our sample mean, which is fine for s, we'll get uh, a different term out front. Okay, and that is our uncertainty in our value. So let's go ahead and calculate it uh, for what we've done for k. Well, we've already done almost all the work. So sigma k was, what was it, like 1.06, 1.07? So uh, our standard deviation of the mean is just going to be 1.07 divided by the square root of 7. Okay, so let's calculate that we get 0 0.404. Okay, so given those measurements, we would write um, that our best estimate of k is equal to k bar, our mean that we calculated, plus or minus the standard deviation of the mean, right? And then their estimate of our uncertainty per measurement, how much we expect it to vary if I just did that measurement again, is given by the standard deviation itself. So what we do, let's, let's, let's um, tie it together with, with what we did last uh, video. We'd write the significant figures such that we have the same precision in our uncertainty. So we'll say that k is equal to 5.0 plus or minus 0 0.4 newtons per meter. Notice that now that we've done statistics, even though our individual measurements had a precision of 5, we can make a better estimate of it 
given this underlying statistics. And we'll see that a bit more clearly when we look at kind of the histogram picture of data next video. And that's basically it. I just wanted to show you, for those of you who like to do things uh, on Python, I, I certainly do, how, how we do this exact same thing. So let's open up our notebook. And I like to always use PyLab inline because I'm lazy and don't like to write NP before everything. Let's write our measurement as follows. Let's write down the values that we got. Uh, 4475645, sounds about right. And we can do things like this. We'll go k, we'll go mk, which is our, we'll go km rather. We'll call that our mean value of k. So it's 5.0 newtons per meter, excellent. Uh, how about our standard deviation? And we'll print that out. Now here's going to be an interesting question. Is it going to be the sample or the population mean? Let's find out. 1.06. Okay, so it gives us the population. Uh, if we wanted the sample mean, there's a way to do it. Uh, we just tell it how many degrees of freedom there are. How many degrees of freedom? Uh, degrees of freedom is zero originally. Um, dependence, so there's no dependence here. That gives us our population mean. If we want the sample, we remove a degree of freedom, and we get that 1.15. I wonder what happens if you put two. Huh, cool. Uh, interesting. And just to be to hammer home the point. Uh, we can say how many n there are. So there's 7. Let's times that number by the square root of 6 sevenths. And we get the original value back. Okay, great. So we'll just keep everything as is. And that's our standard deviation. Okay, finally, we need our uh, standard deviation of the mean. And I don't know, there probably is a Python formula for this. I'm just not sure. Let's just write sdom is equal to the standard deviation of k, or we'll say k standard deviation, divided by the square root of n. And we might not want to count n by hand, so we'll just go like this. n is equal to the length of k. So let's print that out, which is 0 0.402. Yeah, four, sorry, 0 0.404, like we had before. And that's how we do it. So if we wanted to print it out, we just go, um, we found k is equal to, I'll make it an f string, so we can do all these tricks. Let's say round k to the number of significant, di uh, significant digits we want, um, plus or minus our standard deviation, and that many newtons per meter. Have I? Oh, I'm going to get trouble, aren't I? There we go. There's an extra bracket hanging around that was giving me pause. Uh-oh. That is correct. KM. There we go. And that's how, that's how you do it numerically. Okay. That's it for today. Tomorrow, or next video, rather, we'll talk about uh, how to think about this in terms of an underlying probability distribution.